So this is a Luna Clubman SB, it's going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van, we've got the jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake, and also your ATC. We'll go through this in person here on site. In the front locker of the caravan, you've got your gas regulator on the bulkhead, and you've got your gas pipe work coming down to the bottle itself. On top of the bottle, you've got your on-off valve for the gas supply, open and closed as you can see on top. So you'd have it open to allow the gas through to the caravan, and closed when you are travelling. This caravan has a slightly different regulated sim. You can actually have two gas pipes connected at the same time if you wish to. As you can see, we've put a uh, cap on there so it doesn't uh, uh, let the gas escape. However, what you can do is you can change this valve over should you wish to. So this arrow essentially points at this side if you've got a second bottle connected and it will run from the second gas bottle on board the van. At the moment, obviously, we've got it set up to run on the gas bottle that is there. You've then got your heating and hot water flue on the side of the caravan, just here. Um, you don't have to cover this up, but it does, does need to be left open at all times. Below that, you've got your wind down legs for each side of the caravan at the front. Um, they're in the same place on either side through these little holes. You have to wind the legs down to stabilise the caravan and lift them up when you're travelling. You would never lift the caravan with these legs as it could potentially damage the floor of the van. You then have your water pump connection. So on the back here you've got a blue trigger to release it from the side of the caravan and the same to push it in, pull the trigger back and push it into the side of the caravan. The pump itself will actually then drop down inside the aqua roll. Um, don't have the pump turned on before you start uh, before it's in the water as it will draw air up. So you always put the pump in the water first and I'll explain how you fill the system uh, once we're inside the caravan. You then got your leisure battery and your mains power lead coming to the side of the van. So the mains power lead connects to the power on site and the battery itself will run the 12 volt lighting um, and anything else that runs on 12 volt inside the van. Behind the power lead you've got the motor mover power switch will actually demonstrate the motor mover while you're here on site. You then got your fridge vents on the side of the caravan. They are very simply there to allow hot air at the back of the fridge unit and to take some cool air in. And on the top right hand side here you've got your gas flue for the fridge system also. As I said you've got the motor mover will demonstrate while you're here and the wheel nuts will talk while you're here also so that uh, you can see they've been tightened correctly. You've then got your storage locker for underneath the bunk on this side of the van. Um, you can also access this from the inside by lifting up the bed itself. On the back of the van the tank that you're the the flap that you see here is for the toilet flush system. You'll need to put three and a half litres of water in here and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use. In the bottom, you've got your toilet waste cassette. You'll release the toilet waste cassette by pulling up the orange handle and pulling the cassette towards you. The neck here turns out so you can tip the waste away. The grey cap is actually a measure for your pink and blue fluid. And on the back of the cassette, you've got an orange pressure relief button so when you're tipping the waste away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. On the rear of the caravan, you've got your lights, etc. But you've also got your other wind down legs. So you've got one on either side of the caravan, as you can see here. And again, they are just there for stabilizing the van rather than lifting the van. Again, on this side of the van, you have a storage locker to access the storage facilities underneath the bed. And again, you can access from the, this from the inside of the van. Then have your wet storage locker at the front of the van. So if, essentially if you've got any wet items you don't want to take inside the caravan, you can put them in here and lock them away. You've also got a three pin socket just in here. So you can run power out to your awning should you wish to, if you're connected to main power. Front of the van, you've got your barbecue gas point also. And that is there um, so you can connect the gas barbecue up should you wish to. Going inside the caravan, above the door, you have your main power switch for the van. You've got your internal lights for the caravan, just here. You've got your awning light for the outside of the caravan. You've got your view levels. As you can see, it goes through the different levels on the caravan. And then you've got your water pump run down the bottom left-hand side of the screen. To fill the water system, down in this cupboard on the right-hand side, underneath the front right-hand seating area, you will see a yellow valve. That yellow valve is the drain down valve for the caravan, so that will need to be parallel with the floor before you fill the water system up. That valve is upright and pointing towards the bottom of the seat. All the water that you try putting into the caravan will actually drain straight back out the system. 
We do advise after each use of the caravan that you completely drain the system down. So parallel with the floor, as I said, prior to filling the water system up. Once you've got that valve uh, in the right position, you can then come over to every tap on board the caravan, turn them to the hot side and open all the taps up completely on the hot side. This is still before you turn the water pump on. In the bathroom, again, you've got the same. You open all the taps up and the shower one as well. I'm not gonna do the shower at the moment because it's uh, it's already been actually been bled the system prior to the video being done. But I just wanna show you how to do it. So then you come to the switch panel above the door and you press the water pump button. At that point, water will start drawing up from the aqua roll on the outside of the caravan. And you'll notice to start with, it's a bit spitty and splattery, a bit like when the water's been off at home. However, when the water starts running continuously out of every tap on board the caravan, then you can shut each tap back off. So you always wait until you've got a constant flow of water coming out the taps before you can shut each tap back off. Once you have uh, the water system filled, you can actually start heating the water on board the caravan. Before you turn the heating and hot water control panel on, you do actually need to go back underneath the seat on the right hand side of the caravan. And underneath here, you'll see there is two switches. One says space heater, which you need to have on, and one needs to have, and you need to have the water heater on also. Once you have both of these switches on, you'll be able to use the heating and hot water system. In here also, you'll see you've got a couple of charts here that tells you tells you what each fuse block does. So the main fuse block's down this side, and your 12 volt fuse is on here. So you've got 12 volt fuses this side, and your household style trip switches on the right hand side. If you are ever unsure of having power coming into the caravan, so in a sense you're not sure if you've got power coming from the site you're on, if you hit the test switch and it trips, it means you've got power coming in. If you pull this up, Again, the power will come back on. However, if you hit the test trip switch and it doesn't trip, then it means there is no power coming to the caravan from the site you are on. Also, on the top left-hand side of this control panel, you have a master system shutdown. So you can isolate the power completely inside of the caravan, should you ever need to. So you press that in and it will pop this button out um, and it will turn off the power essentially inside the van. So once you've got them switches on, um, you can come up to the control panel on the right hand side here. Got an on off switch for the control panel just here. So you've got off and on. Now on this home screen that you can see here, press the menu button and go back again. You've got an indicator on the top right hand side, it's on night mode at the moment, but if you've got an indicator here on the top right hand side to let you know you've got power coming to the van. And below that you've got the current internal temperature of the van. Hit the menu button, it will take you into the options for the heating and hot water. At the top here, you've got a plus and minus to set your room temperature for the caravan. They are, you have to give them quite a good push to get them to operate, as you can see. So when it's on five, essentially the heating is completely off. Below that, you've got your option to turn on your hot water. So you've got hot water on when this bar is half full. And then when you press it again, when this bar is completely full, you've got it on hot water boost for when you're showering on board the caravan. Below that, you have the amount of power coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. Now, if you haven't got power coming to the caravan and you want to use gas, you'd have this off essentially, and I'll go through the gas operation in a moment. You've then got the option of one, two, or three kilowatts of power coming into the van from the site you are on. Essentially, if you're not sure of what power you need to set this to, if you ask at the site office when you arrive on your holiday, they will advise you of what to set this to. If you want to ignite the gas system on board the heat, for the heating and hot water, like I said, this control panel is only relevant to the heating and hot water. It does not control anything else on board the van. The gas symbol down in this bottom left-hand corner is how you ignite the gas system. You'll hit the gas, uh, the flame symbol on the bottom left-hand side and the heating and hot water system will ignite on gas. Also, you can use it for a boost if you have lower power available. If it fails to ignite, it'll actually come up with gas fail on the bottom of the screen, just down here with two exclamation marks either end. So the top row, room temperature, one below is your water temperature. 
the bottom one, uh, the third one down is the amount of power coming into the caravan from the site you're on. And the bottom left hand side is the option to run gas on board the caravan. The button here isn't, isn't used. And on the right hand side here you have some advanced settings which we advise you read the manual for. If I tried taking you through them, taking you through them in the video, it would probably take me around two to three hours. The microwave on board this caravan is actually an eco microwave. You have a button here. You have an eco microwave, but eco button here on the microwave. You need to press this to get the microwave to wake up, as after a short while it will turn itself off, so it saves power. The hob, very simple to use. It works very much the same as your household appliance, uh, household grill, uh, uh, oven, sorry, hob. Electric ring on the back of the hob will only work when you're connected to two 40 volt mains and your three gas rings will work when you have gas connected to the caravan. The same as your oven and grill. You have an igniter on the front as you'd expect to see on any oven. We're gonna to go to the fridge next. Now the fridge is dual fuel, essentially and it has got a, another system where it runs off the 12 volt system off the car you're towing with, so you can use the fridge as a cool box. So you turn the fridge on with the power button on the left hand side. As you can see at the moment, it's trying to ignite on gas. Now at the moment it won't ignite because the gas bottle's turned off. However, if it failed to ignite, what you'd actually see is, is a flashing flame symbol here and a red warning light on the right hand side in this triangle. If it fails to ignite, I'd advise you go over to the hob Make sure the gas is turned on first. Get the gas through on the hob because that is the last point on the gas system. Press and hold the red reset triangle on the right hand side here. As you can see, reset. Press and hold it and the gas system will start to reignite. You can control the temperature on mains or gas on this button on the right hand side with the thermometer on it. To run your 240 volt fridge, if you're on mains power, which we advise you do if you are on a main system or mains hookup, you'd press the, the plug symbol here with the fridge turned on and again you can control the temperature on the button just here. Now as I was saying, you can run the fridge as a cool box while you're travelling down the road. You do not need to have the control panel on above the door, this can be turned off. And what you do is you come inside, you turn the fridge on and then select the 12 volt mode or the 12 volt battery on the right hand side. Like I said, it will work from the car as long as you have the right connection on the car. Um, when it is working on the 12 volt, this light will be solid blue. However, at the moment, it's warning me that there is no 12 volt supply going to the appliance. Turn the fridge off, you'll press and hold the power button on the left hand side. In the wardrobe, just before you get to the bed area, you will actually notice this tank on the wall. That is for your Audi heating and hot water system. Now you'll notice the level of it is on max. If that drops down below the minimum of the max, it's not a problem. But however, if it drops below the minimum, you do need to contact us and we'll advise of, of what fluid to top this up with. Going into the bathroom, very easy to use toilet system. Before I get to the toilet system, the towel rail in the bathroom holds heat for a long time. So if you've got young, young ones on board the van, please do make sure they are careful around it as they do get extremely hot. In the bathroom, you have an electric, uh, you have an electric flush with the toilet system. On top of the toilet system, you also have a red indicator light to let you know when the toilet waste cassette is full and when it needs to be emptied. The toilet seat itself actually turns for your convenience, as you can see. However, when you're removing the cassette from underneath the van, you need to make sure it is in the straight position, as it is now, so you can release the cassette from under the van. The reason being, if it's turned at all, it'll actually lock the cassette in place. Below the toilet, you'll see there's a grey handle. Now, this is the waste handle, essentially. You need to make sure you have this open before you use the loop, and then I'd advise you shut it back off after to stop any smells coming up inside the van. However, when you remove the cassette from underneath the van, again, this does need to be in the closed position, as it is now, because again, it will not allow you to remove the cassette from under the van if it is open. So that is the Luna Clubman SB. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company, and we'd be more than happy to help. We appreciate your business, and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon when you collect your caravan. Thank you for now. Bye-bye.